The idea that the United Nations UN is the foundation for a world government is a perspective rooted in the organization's global structure and mission. The UN, like the State of Israel, was established, some say, as a goal of World War II. The initial idea for the UN is said to have emerged during World War II. In the August of 1941, American President Franklin D. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill issued the Atlantic Charter. This charter laid the groundwork for the UN's founding principles. Roosevelt was a Freemason. He was initiated on October 11, 1911, at Holland Lodge No. 8 in New York City. Churchill was also a Freemason. He was initiated on May 24, 1901, at Studholm Lodge No. 1591 in London. While they do not publicly have the authority to govern nations directly, they serve as platforms for international decision-making. This makes them key players in coordinating global actions, which some view as a step towards centralized global governance, often called a new world order by other Freemasons in the highly discredited mainstream media. The UN consists of specialized agencies, like the World Health Organization, who in the International Monetary Fund, IMF, which have significant influence over international policies. These agencies often work across national borders, influencing the behavior and policies of member states, which is seen as a precursor to a more centralized system of governance. Through its agreements and treaties, the UN establishes international laws that member states are expected to follow. The International Court of Justice, ICJ, and other judicial bodies created by the UN enforce these laws, laying a framework for international legal standards. Agenda 2030, formerly known as the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, is a comprehensive plan adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015. It includes 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, aimed at addressing global challenges, such as poverty, inequality, climate change, and peace, and justice. UN initiatives, like the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, promote coordinated actions across nations. This effort at global coordination is seen as the UN creating policies that transcend national sovereignty, steering the world toward unified goals. The UN has a mandate to intervene in global conflicts through its armed forces, sometimes by passing the sovereignty of individual nations to maintain control of populations. This capability gives the UN a level of authority in international affairs that could be perceived as a step toward centralized global control. While these factors suggest that the UN plays a significant role in global governance, it is not yet officially called a world government. The organization relies on voluntary cooperation from its member states' leaders, often internationalists, who are allegedly voted in by the native populations, and its decisions are often driven by the foreign policies of the countries involved. While Agenda 2030 does not explicitly outline specific immigration policies, its goals indirectly influence global migration patterns, including the movement of people from poorer nations to wealthier ones. SDG 8. Decent Work and Economic Growth This goal is sold as focusing on promoting sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. It emphasizes the importance of creating economic opportunities that can improve the livelihoods of individuals, including migrants. Critics argue that in pursuit of economic growth, local economies become increasingly dependent on migrant labor, leading to the displacement of native workers. This occurs in industries where employers may prefer cheaper migrant labor over hiring local workers, resulting in higher unemployment or underemployment among the native population. The arrival of large numbers of migrants strains social cohesion, particularly if integration policies are inadequate. Critics point out that this leads to social tensions, as native populations feel that their social services, housing, and employment opportunities are being disproportionately allocated to newcomers. 
Another concern is that the presence of a large migrant workforce suppresses wages and lowers working conditions for native workers. Critics argue that the availability of migrant labor willing to accept lower wages creates downward pressure on wages overall, making it harder for native workers to secure decent paying jobs with good conditions, increasing the device between those who have money and those who do not. The increased demand for public services, such as healthcare, education, and housing, due to rising populations from immigration, is another point of concern. Critics argue that without sufficient investment in public infrastructure, native populations experience reduced access to these services, leading to longer wait times, overcrowded facilities, and overall decreased quality of life. The focus on economic growth for the elites leads to increased development and urbanization, encroaching on lands traditionally used or valued by native populations. Critics warn that this leads to environmental degradation, loss of agricultural land, and the destruction of natural habitats, which can disproportionately affect indigenous and rural communities. SDG 10. Reduced inequalities. One of the targets under this goal is to facilitate orderly, safe, and responsible migration and mobility of people, including through the implementation of planned, and well-managed migration policies. This includes recognizing the positive contributions of migrants to economic growth and sustainable development. While this goal is sold as fostering global cooperation and development, the reality is large-scale immigration due to cultural erosion in host countries. Communities struggle to integrate large numbers of immigrants, leading to tensions between native populations and newcomers. Over time, critics warn that local customs, traditions, and languages will be diluted as a result of these demographic changes, leading to a loss of cultural identity for both migrants and host communities. In some cases, rapid changes in cultural composition has been proven to fuel social unrest. For example, when immigration policies encouraged by Agenda 2030 not carefully managed, Native populations feel overwhelmed by the influx of migrants, leading to xenophobia and violent conflict. This dynamic strains social cohesion and challenges the very inclusivity that the agenda claims to promote, causing division where one side is pitted against the other, divide and conquer, a method the British are experts in. The movement of people from poorer nations to wealthier ones is often seen as a way to address labor shortages in host countries while simultaneously providing economic opportunities for migrants. Migrants from poorer nations often move to wealthier countries in search of better employment opportunities. These jobs provide higher wages than what is available in their home countries, enabling them to send money back home, which takes money away from the host nation to stimulate the migrants' local economies. These financial flows are recognized in Agenda 2030 as important for achieving sustainable development. SDG 17. Partnerships for the Goals. This goal is sold as the need for global partnerships to achieve sustainable development, including financial flows such as wages earned in host nations sent by migrants to their home countries. Some critics view this emphasis on international collaboration as a threat to national sovereignty. The agenda encourages governments to adopt policies in line with global standards on issues such as environmental sustainability, migration, and economic equality. The pressure to conform to international guidelines limits a nation's ability to pursue policies that best suit its own unique political, economic, and social contexts. For instance, countries may be compelled to adopt environmental regulations or migration policies that conflict with the interests of their citizens. This creates tension between local governments and international organizations, leading to a perception that decision-making power is being transferred from national governments to global bodies. As a result, some argue that the agenda undermines democratic processes and the ability of nations to govern in the best interest of their own people who voted them into the privilege of power.
One of the key critiques of Agenda 2030 is the disconnect between the policymakers who draft global strategies and the citizens who experience the effects of these policies on the ground. While government officials and international bodies sell Agenda 2030 as a roadmap for a better future, everyday people often face the immediate consequences of policy shifts. For instance, policies promoting environmental sustainability used to higher energy costs, while immigration policies aimed at inclusivity strain local infrastructure and social services. The implementation of Agenda 2030's goals requires substantial resources, and in many cases, it is the tax-paying public that shoulders the burden. Citizens feel that they are paying the price for policies that benefit global elites or foreign interests, while providing little direct benefit to their own communities. This disconnect fosters resentment,